Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Mona al author of the Muslim Narcissist book and empowerment coach for Muslims. In today's podcast, I'll be answering a question, which is, how can narcissists show so much support and empathy and emotions for the plight of the people of Gaza and their suffering, but they have no empathy or emotions for their own family members and continue to inflict suffering, pain and abuse on them even though they know and understand that they are being cruel like the oppressors who are oppressing the Palestinian people. So as you can see, it's very ironic behaviour that causes a lot of confusion in people and it's actually caused a lot of people to allow narcissists back into their lives because they doubt themselves thinking, well, maybe I'm the one who's in the wrong, maybe I'm the one who has the problem and not the narcissist because clearly they have a good heart, clearly they have empathy, maybe I really am the problem and that's why the narcissist cannot show me any kindness or love or compassion because they can clearly show it for other people. So it's really important that this subject is talked about because so many people get reeled back into toxic relationships when they see narcissistic people display so much kindness and emotions for the Palestinian people and it's not just for you know the Palestinian cause it could be for any other cause around the world where people are suffering and then what usually happens is when they get reeled back into a toxic relationship they go through even more abuse and it gets so much worse because next time round they really could be stuck with a pregnancy or a child Or the narcissist may have convinced them to move abroad where they're isolated from everyone and their families so they have no support system. Or the physical abuse could get worse. So it's really important for you to take note of this because I see a lot of people get fooled by an outward facade that they are presenting. And they also become more depressed because they are so confused as people as to who they are. And they wonder now if they are the narcissists who have misunderstood their abusers all this time. So in this podcast, I will be speaking to you about four different types of narcissists when it comes to the subject of the Palestinian cause. And like I said before, you can apply this to any other cause around the world that they show any kindness, care and compassion for. So as always, I'd like to kindly ask you to like, share and subscribe to the channel If you find this content beneficial, do show your support so we can help this channel grow and get this information out to everyone who is in desperate need of it, okay? So please do share my podcast with your friends and family members, especially those who are trying to heal, those who are going through narcissistic abuse, and even narcissists, you know, this will help them so much to understand their disorder and hopefully their eyes will be open to the serious damage they are causing to themselves before everyone else, okay? So I know loads of narcissists, alhamdulillah, are getting the help they need from this channel and it's because of wonderful people who have shared the podcast with them. So you will find many narcissistic people out there who do want to get out of their disorder, they do want to heal from it. So information like this could truly be a lifeline because many have said that they can truly relate to everything that I've said. So inshallah, you'll get the rewards for sharing this content and helping those who really need to hear all this. And if you're new to this channel, I'd like to welcome you. I have created this collection of podcasts so that you can go through them like a course and it will help you on your healing journey as well. So there will be many things that I speak about in my latest podcast that you may not understand. For example, the Qareen, Jinn issues and all of those things. So I do advise that you start from the beginning and work your way up. Okay, everything will make sense when you go through all the podcasts in order. And of course, if you haven't grabbed a copy of the book, do read that too, because all the foundational information is in the book. And the podcasts have been created to supplement the information that's in there. So I basically take a deeper dive into the details of the subjects I originally wrote about in the book. Okay, I get to expand on them more in this channel to give you a more comprehensive understanding of the disorder and everything that you're going through and seeing in yourselves and also in the people around you. Okay, so let's go back to the podcast and the four different types of Muslim narcissists 
who I'm going to be speaking about today. Now, if you're not a Muslim, you can apply this to Christian narcissists, Jewish narcissists, or narcissists from any other religion who act in the same way towards a humanitarian crisis or to a crisis that is significant to your religion. So the first type would be the narcissist who doesn't care at all about the Palestinian conflict. Okay, so you get those people who are borderline psychopaths as well, or full-on psychopaths, and they are so emotionally disconnected from themselves and from other people that they are unable to feel or empathise with the suffering of those who are living through a war and who suffer at the hands of oppressors. So for this type of narcissist, being ignorant and dismissing the news, not being interested in watching videos and looking at images or reading articles or anything to do with the Palestinian conflict works in their favour because it takes away the guilt and feeling bad for living their life in the way they wish because they don't want to sacrifice anything and they don't want the headache of having to, you know, go through sleepless nights or depressive moods because of what's going on in Palestine. So they would rather not know so that they can continue enjoying their life, right? These are people who want to have fun and reading or watching, you know, images and videos about the Palestinian conflict is going to ruin their fun. It's going to put a damper on their mood. So in order for them to be able to enjoy their lives, they have to completely switch off from any crisis happening in the Ummah and around the world in general. So in their minds, they believe they have more important things to do. They believe that this life is meant to be enjoyed and this is not their problem to deal with. They believe that this is the problem of world leaders and so they can afford to be selfish with their time and their energy and their emotions. So when they switch off to these conflicts, they don't actually care about how people feel about it. So you'll find that these people will be the overt narcissists, okay? And they will more often than not be the liberal Muslims. And when I say liberal Muslims, I mean those who are not practicing and aren't really concerned about the state of the ummah. None of that's their concern. Their concern is the dunya. Their concern is making money and living a luxurious life and living a headache-free life as much as possible because dealing with the difficult emotions of other people and watching people go through very difficult hardships is something they'd rather avoid because to them all of this is a huge inconvenience. So they switch off. So they don't care if people think they're arrogant, they don't care if people think they're narcissists, that they're mean... They don't care. The overt narcissist doesn't care about what people think of them, unlike the covert narcissist who likes to show people that they are a great person. Okay, that's what makes the overt narcissist less dangerous than the one who is covert, because what you see is what you get with the overt narcissist, okay? And in these kinds of situations as well, they will often show a lot of disrespect towards the actions of people who are showing their support for Palestine. So, for example, people boycotting Starbucks and McDonald's and other companies that support the genocide will be disrespected by these narcissists who are seen drinking, you know, their daily coffee in Starbucks. They continue doing that. They continue going to McDonald's. They continue shopping in all of the stores that they like, even if they have publicly announced that they are supporting the oppressor. So again, because these narcissists look for what's convenient, they don't care if it's at the expense of people dying and all of that because they don't have that level of empathy. They have a chronic disorder that completely disconnects them from feeling any kind of compassion for other people. And they do it deliberately. They make a decision to not feel anything. They don't want to feel anything because... They have chosen a different life path, which is, I'm going to pursue what's good for me. It's a very selfish way of thinking, but it suits them. It works for them. Because they see so many Muslims depressed over the Palestinian conflict, 
and they just say to themselves, no, that's not going to be me. I'm not going to live my life like that. I'd rather have fun. I'd rather, you know, make loads of money and not be bothered with this entire crisis. That doesn't serve me well at all. I can't fix it. I can't stop it. So what's the point? You know, what's the point getting involved and just giving myself depression, giving myself anxiety? Nope, I'd rather step out of it and let everyone else deal with it. Okay, that's their mindset. That's how they think. And there's a hadith that was narrated by Ibn Umar, who said, the Prophet said, that the furthest of people from Allah are those who have a hard heart. Okay, so when I tell you that these are the liberal Muslims, you can understand why from this hadith. So they are very far away from Allah. They're not practicing. They have no connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... The accumulation of sins that come as a result of being so far from Allah causes them to have a hard heart. And having a hard heart means that you have no mercy or compassion for other people and yourself. So you're actually causing oppression towards yourself by not allowing yourself to feel the emotions that are required for you to be human. Okay, so us feeling sadness and grief over the Palestinian conflict just shows us that we're human. It shows us that we have empathy and it's a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows us that we're not disconnected from our emotions and that there's something there. So even if it's just a little bit of empathy, it's still enough for it to grow. Okay, it's even if it's as small as a seed, the empathy can still grow if you feel some sort of compassion or you know, sadness for these people who are suffering because you wish to help them, but you can't. These narcissists don't think like that. They have no desire to help them. They don't want to be in that situation. They can't even fathom being in that situation, so they switch it off. They don't want to think about it. And that's why they distract themselves with so many things. And you see so many Muslims who, you know, you look at them and you just think, wow, they are completely switched off from the Palestinian conflict. They really don't care. You can tell they don't care. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, caused their hearts to be so hard as a result of them not having any mercy for those who are less fortunate than them. And there's another hadith that's narrated by Amr ibn Abi Habib radiallahu anhu who narrated that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَابَ عَبْدٌ وَخَسِرَ مَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ رَحْمَةً للبشر. Which means that a servant of Allah has failed and lost if Allah has not placed mercy in their heart towards humanity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away the mercy from your heart when the accumulation of sins gets so high as a result of you not repenting. So... The accumulation of sins is what hardens your heart. And when your heart becomes hard, the rahma, the mercy from it, gets taken. So now you don't feel anything for anyone because your heart is so cold. It's so difficult to open because it's so hard. So there's no mercy. And it becomes a punishment for that person. Okay, The depletion of a heart from mercy and compassion is a heart that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're in trouble. You're in trouble if you've got a heart like that. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shall I not tell you who will be forbidden from the fire? Every gentle, soft-hearted and kind person. Okay, this is narrated in Tirmidhi. So the soft-hearted people are those who are filled with mercy and compassion and empathy for others. Okay, so the harder your heart is, the more you're going to be closed emotionally to other people. And the softer your heart is, the more empathic you are going to be. And you're going to be saved on the day of judgment with that soft heart. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Ayah 88, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ which translates to, on that day when neither wealth will be of any use to anyone nor their children, except to those who will come to Allah with a sound, soft heart. 
okay? So these types of narcissists who are so hard-hearted and you just see them partying and you see them you know, attending festivals while there's a genocide going on, I'm not saying that you shouldn't you know, enjoy your life. Everyone has their portion of rizq to enjoy in this life. So, you know, there are going to be wars happening all the time. So it doesn't mean that Allah wants us to live in complete misery because of these wars that are happening. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the believers to reevaluate the things that are not necessary in their lives as a result of this. Okay, so look at what these Muslims are going through. Do you really need to be attending these festivals and these parties? You know, there has to be a level of compassion with things that we can afford to let go of. You know, do we need to have that £50,000 wedding? And do we need to be showing off on social media, you know, all this food that we're eating and all these lavish iftars that we're going to? There's no need for it, okay? There are certain things that believers can let go of. The believers won't do this anyway, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses the believers when it comes to showing compassion towards those who are less fortunate. Why are people posting about all of these lavish iftars when the Palestinians are starving and there are Muslims and people all around the world who are starving? Why are we doing this? So there has to be a very high level of narcissism in people to be showing off with things like this, with money and parties and, and iftars and food and God knows what else, there has to be a high level of narcissism for them to act like this, knowing that there are people out there who are seriously suffering, okay? So Allah doesn't expect us to completely switch off everything to show our support for those who are less fortunate, but he wants us to re-evaluate the way we live our lives, okay, to knock the narcissism out of those who show off and those who don't care and those who just want to have fun, they want to go to concerts, they want to do this and they want to do that and they don't want this war in Palestine to be an inconvenience for their happiness. So those narcissists who cannot let go of the dunya, they cannot let go of the lavish lifestyle and they cannot let go of showing off, those are the people who don't care. Okay, deep down they don't care about what's happening. So that's type number one. Okay, just for you to be aware of, they're usually overt. Like I said, you will know who they are. They don't hide their intentions. They don't hide how they feel. And you might be married to one and it's extremely frustrating living in the same house as someone who clearly doesn't care, right? Especially if you're someone who cares and you want your children to care. When they have a father or a mother who's really not bothered and all they care about is, you know, living their life, it can be really frustrating and disheartening and it can also be very embarrassing, okay? Because you're really trying to be a good Muslim and this person who's living with you is not making life easy for you to raise your children with that compassion and mercy. You know, they're not being a good role model. And these people could be your sisters, they could be your brothers, they could be your parents, they could be your best friends. You know, a lot of people have lost relationships with people in their families and in their friendship circles because they've shown no interest whatsoever in the Palestinian problem. So moving on now to the second type of narcissist in this situation and they are those who pretend to care about the Palestinians to look good and to gain a good reputation. So these are the majority of narcissists. They are the covert narcissists and they want to portray this good image of themselves in public but at home they are horrid. So I've had a lot of clients tell me that their husbands and wives or their parents or their siblings are very proactive in this Palestinian cause. You know, they go to protests, they go to all the events, they give charity, they cry when they look at videos and images, they get depressed and they find it really confusing because these are the same people who are oppressing them at home 
and making their lives an absolute hell. So it's very ironic how a lot of these people oppose and condemn Netanyahu for what he's doing to the Palestinians, but they are being their own version of Netanyahu at home. So, you know, their family members are being physically abused, mentally abused, verbally abused, religiously abused, spiritually abused, sometimes all at the same time. But they cry for the people of Gaza and they cry for the children who are dying, but they are beating their own children at home. They are vile to their own children at home. They neglect their own children. They neglect children from other wives they might have or they just go to work. There might be mothers who go to work and they don't care about what their children had to eat that day. They don't care about their children's well-being. They either give their child to a nanny or to the father to look after and they're not bothered. They're really not bothered about nurturing these children and being loving towards them. But somehow they can sit for a very long time and cry over the torture that Palestinian children are going through. So a lot of people ask me, how is this possible? How is it that they can show so much compassion and mercy for the Palestinian children who are dying and for the Palestinians in general who are being martyred, but they inflict so much abuse on their own families? They don't have that same love for their own children and they don't have that same compassion for their family members whom they're abusing. And there's only one answer to this. And the answer is, it's all fake. Okay, with this particular narcissist who is horrid to their family, but they can show compassion for people who are not their family members and they make a big show of it, these people are showing fake emotions. Okay, always remember, narcissists have an incredible ability to fake emotions. And they would have learnt this from childhood. They would have learnt how to fake cry to get their way. They would have learnt how to show grief. They would have learnt how to show sadness when it suits them and when it benefits them. Okay, so if it's convenient for them to show particular emotions, then that's exactly what they're going to do to achieve the desired result. So... There are a few things that they achieve when they manipulate people in this way. The first thing will be triangulation. So sometimes a covert narcissist will use the Palestinian conflict to cause jealousy in their family members. So this is how they triangulate all three. So when their family members see that they are putting in a lot of time and emotions and energy into the Palestinian conflict, you know, crying over children dying and people suffering, but they're being abused at home, they incite jealousy, okay? They fuel it in their wives, in their husbands, in their children, because they're all thinking, well, why don't we have that compassion from you? Why don't we have that love and that mercy and these tears and this kindness and all of these emotions? Why are you giving it to strangers when we need it? You know, we are the priority here. We're your family. Why is it that you can show other children so much love, but your own children you abuse? And so people get jealous, the victims of the narcissist get jealous when they see that the narcissist actually has emotions and mercy for children and other men and women whom they're not related to. So it makes them feel unworthy. They have resentment and bitterness towards the narcissistic father or mother or husband or wife and problems escalate. And what usually happens is that children or husbands and wives sometimes work harder to gain the attention of the narcissistic parent or spouse so that they can take their attention away from the Palestinian conflict. So what their qareen actually wants to achieve in this situation is that the victim starts to resent the Palestinian conflict for what the narcissist is doing to them. 
Okay, so now there are people who don't even want to look at the news anymore because all their problems at home are rooted in this problem. Okay, it's all rooted in the narcissist spending too much time watching videos, looking at images and following the news about what's happening in Palestine that they're neglecting and abusing their family even more. They're triangulating them and now their family members are jealous and they don't want to hear about Palestine anymore. They don't want to look at the videos of children who are dying and the people who are being martyred. It's now become a problem and their qareen has achieved a mission. Because now the codependent victims are going to switch off from the Palestinian conflict as well. Because they feel neglected as a result of it. And this in turn shows the narcissist that this type of manipulation works. So when the family members work even harder to get the attention of the narcissist, that's more fuel for them, right? That's more narc fuel. And so they do it deliberately to spend too much time watching videos and being very preoccupied about Palestine. They do it deliberately because they really enjoy seeing everyone fight for their attention. It gives them a sense of importance. Remember when I told you before that narcissists love to feel like they are being worshipped. And so the more people fight for their attention, the more grandiose and arrogant they're going to get. Okay, and unfortunately, fighting for their attention only enables this behavior to keep going. Because the message they are trying to send you is that you are not significant enough for me to show the same compassion that I'm showing for the Palestinians for you. Okay, you're not that important. You're not significant. You are a nobody. You have to work to earn my pleasure. You have to work hard to gain my attention. Okay, so that's the message they want to indirectly send out to you so that you are now competing for their time and to see just a little bit of that empathy that they show they can give to other people. And this is why I tell you, you know, people who have MPD are not crazy. They know how to switch their emotions on and off. They know how to be nice when they want to be nice. And they know how to be cruel and tyrannical. So people who are declared insane cannot do that. They cannot rationally think and monopolize and strategize all of these things. They are people who have no control at all over their emotions. But people who have MPD, they're in full control. They know exactly what they're doing. So they're not considered to be those who are among the exempt on the Day of Judgment for being people who are insane. This is not insanity. MPD does not classify them as being crazy for acting in the way they do. They are fully aware of what they're doing. Because they choose who to manipulate and they choose who to be nice to and who to be horrible to. Okay, so there is a choice here in what they do and with whom they do it. And another reason why they immerse themselves so much into the Palestinian conflict is because it gives them an excuse to always be depressed. So narcissists are moody as hell most of the time. So when they can focus on something like this, it gives them an excuse to always be depressed, always be cranky. When you ask them why they're in such a bad mood, why they are being gruff, why they're being so rude, why they've got an attitude, they'll say, oh, I, I saw some videos today, you know, of children being killed in Palestine. It's really ruined my day. And more often than not, the people whom they are being so rude to will make an excuse for them. They'll say, oh, okay, yeah, I understand. I saw some videos too. You know, may Allah ease their suffering, inshallah. And, but they give the narcissist an excuse. But now it becomes a daily thing. Now it becomes a regular thing where the narcissist is always using this excuse to inflict more abuse on the people within their home. Because they've seen that it's a great way of doing that and getting away with it. Okay, so they are literally being Israel in their own homes. <laughs> they are being the oppressors and they are treating 
their family members like the Palestinian victims. Okay, they are being unbearable to live with. And they are forcing everyone to tolerate their terrible behaviour in the name of them doing something good, which is you know, sympathising with the Palestinian cause. So while people are happy to see Narcissus sympathise with the Palestinians, it's also causing a great problem because the narcissist is using this as an excuse to get away with more abuse and also for you to not bother them. So when a narcissist doesn't want to be bothered at home by the children, by the wife, by the husband, they will say that they want their own space because they feel depressed. They'll go and sit in their room or, you know, they will spend long periods of time on their phone or out of the house because they feel depressed over what they've seen. And they do it to stay away from everyone. They do it so that no one bothers them. And... I see it a lot, you know, I see it especially in the older generation where a woman might say to her children, oh, don't don't speak to your father today, he's in a really bad mood, he's really upset over what's happening in Palestine, you know, don't speak to him because he's in a really cranky mood. They give him excuses, they keep enabling this behaviour, you know, there has to come a time when people put their foot down and say, look, I understand that you're really upset about this, you know, this conflict, but You've got a family you're responsible for. You know, we need you here as well. And, you know, we can't live like this. But so many people are terrified of the narcissists in their lives. And they can't stand up to them. And they don't want to cause even more problems and receive even more abuse by addressing the problem. So they just leave them to it. But you hear it a lot. You know, don't speak to your mother. Your mother's very depressed today because she's really upset about the children who are dying in Palestine or or don't speak to your father today. Don't ask him, you know, for that money that you need or don't ask him for help with your homework because he's in a terrible mood after what he watched today. You know, they bank on this to get away with so many things. They exaggerate their depression and anxiety over the conflict so that they can get what they need out of the situation. It's a convenience for them. And another reason why they do this and they overly exaggerate their care and, you know, their emotional investment into the Palestinian conflict is to create self-doubt in you. So what I mean by this is they want you to believe that they are truly empathic and it confuses you because Like I said, they are horrible at home. They're abusive at home. But at the same time, they're showing that they have so much empathy. So they can't be narcissists, right? And they can't be the psychopaths you thought they were. So something must be wrong with you. And this is what they want you to believe. Okay, so it's a form of gaslighting. And it's basically to take you off track so that everything you've seen and experienced now becomes a very confusing memory in your mind. Did I deserve it? Maybe I did it because I deserved it. Maybe I was the one in the wrong because this person is clearly showing me that they are a really nice person and that they have love and mercy and compassion and kindness in their hearts. So maybe everything that I went through happened as a result of me deserving it and me asking for it and me doing X, Y, Z to provoke him or her into treating me that way. So now the tables turn. And again, this is what their qareen wants. The tables now turn to make it so that you continue enabling the behavior because now they are no longer the problem in your eyes. Now you're starting to see yourself as the problem. Now you're starting to think that maybe it's because I'm doing something wrong that I'm not receiving all this love, kindness and compassion from my spouse or my parent or my sibling. I can see it now that I'm the problem. So once the narcissist realises that you've come to that conclusion as a result of their gaslighting, that's when they start to relax a bit on how much they invest in the Palestinian conflict or they will ramp it up even more. 
because they are really enjoying seeing you blame yourself for the way the narcissist has treated you all of this time. Now they feel some glee that the blame has now been taken off their shoulders and you have carried it for them. Okay, that shame that they felt as abusers has now been taken from them because you've taken responsibility for the abuse that's been inflicted on you and they see this as a success. Okay, it's a mission complete. They are now free from accountability for all the abuse that they've put you through because you have claimed accountability on their behalf. So when you go to them and you say, I'm so sorry, you know, it seems like I was the problem. What can I do to fix this? You know, how can I be better? They now realize that you've taken the blame from their shoulders and they become even more arrogant, right? They really milk that situation. So they ramp it up and they increase the attention that they spend on the Palestinian conflict as punishment now. So now it becomes a punishment. And it's to acknowledge that you truly are the problem. Yes, you've come to the conclusion that you are the problem. Well done. Well done for doing that. And well done for taking accountability on my behalf. Now I'm going to increase the attention that I spend watching videos and being depressed over this cause. Because I want you to do more of that. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the continuation of the bad treatment that is going to go on for quite a while because that's my intention and it's also an exit card from responsibilities so you'll find that women will say I don't feel like cooking today I don't feel like doing the homework with the kids today I don't feel like giving the kids a bath I don't feel like doing this or doing that because you know I've I'm so depressed over Palestine I just want to stay in bed I want to be alone, and all of that to get out of responsibilities. And men do the same. Men will say, you know, I don't want to go and do the shopping. I'm not going to go and fix your car today. I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that because I've got a headache. You know, all this uh, news about Palestine is really, you know, I just want to stay at home. I don't want to do anything. Don't bother me. Don't ask me for anything. I'll do it later. And then they drag it out a week, two weeks, and you find yourself nagging them to do it. And they're always using, you know, this excuse to get out of responsibilities. And another reason why they really love to put on a show when it comes to their support for Palestine or their fake support for Palestine is to gain a good reputation with other people. So when they are seen going to protests, when they are seen participating in charity events and donating money and being involved in various activities in the mosque to do with Gaza, then it's because they want to build their social reputation as a great person so that eventually when the relationship with you ends and information is leaked about them being an abuser because they know that day is coming, they know that relationship is going to end and they know one day you're going to talk. So they're preparing for that day. So if they can show themselves to be a great person in the community, then it will help them to prepare for their great victim story so that no one will believe what you say about them being an abuser and they will go with what they've seen this person be like in the community. So, you know, they want people to say things like, you know, mashallah, he or she is such a great person. You know, they donate so much. They always come to the mosque, you know, for our charity events. They're fantastic at fundraising. You know, they're always at every protest. They want people to say these things about them. And that's why they invest so much time and energy into being active in all of this. And like I said, you'll be so confused because you're like, this person is nothing like this at home. He or she does not show this type of support at home. They couldn't care less about their own children. They don't even ask about other children they might have with their exes or their stepchildren. They don't care about anybody. But in public, they show the world that they do, that they're great family men, that they're great wives, 
that they're great parents, the best parents in the community, but those wonderful people in the community are a complete nightmare at home. Like I said, they are Netanyahu's in their own homes. Abu Ishaq anhu narrated that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, The best of what a believing man can be given is good character. And the worst of what a man can be given is an evil heart with a beautiful appearance. Now you can apply this hadith to women as well. And beautiful appearance could mean, you know, being physically attractive. And it can also mean, you know, showing people that you are a beautiful person in character. So it means absolutely nothing if your heart is evil, right? You are showing the world that you are such a wonderful person who supports Palestine, but you're actually a narcissistic, nasty piece of work inside that heart of yours and behind closed doors, okay? How many beautiful women have we seen, you know, right all over their social media, oh, free Palestine and free this and free that, but you can tell they're so narcissistic. They are so rude to their parents. They are so rude to other people. They are haters. They are trolls online. And they just have this beautiful appearance. But they hide behind this mask of free Palestine and, you know, Palestine this and Palestine that. And how many men do we see online who, again, they plaster it all over their social media but the activities they're involved in are just narcissistic, right? The showing off, the bragging, look at my Lamborghini, look at my Bentley, look at this, look at that. But free Palestine. Like, who are you trying to fool when you're posting your topless gym selfies with free Palestine underneath it? Or your name is Aisha and you're posing in a bikini at the beach and you're writing about Palestine and you've got vile comments from Akhi Abdullahs and all sorts of vermin and street rats telling you, oh, you sexy lady, and please, Habibti, please check your DMs. But hey, free Palestine, right? And the funny thing is, is that the believers don't need to take their advice to pray for the Palestinians, because the Palestinians only need the dua of the believers. They don't want the dua of narcissists or all of the fake Muslim influencers, the hijabis and the non-hijabis, the practicing and the non-practicing, they don't need the dua of all of these people who are capitalizing on the genocide to get views, to get followers, to get popularity and to get fame. And you know who I'm talking about. I won't mention any names, but I am sickened. I am sickened to the core of what I have been seeing on social media from Muslim influencers when it comes to the Palestinian conflict. And I'm still talking about the same category of narcissists here, okay? The same covert narcs who are fake in their support for Palestine. Because deep down you can tell from their actions that they're not that concerned. I mean, no one annoys me more on social media than the hijabi influencers who do make an awareness about what's happening in Gaza and they do encourage people to donate money and everything but they do it while they are subtly showing off what they have. So, for example, a woman I saw on social media was giving a tour of her grand new house while she was talking about the genocide. So there are some of them, obviously, who are going to have, you know, some emotions and compassion towards the people of Gaza. I'm not saying that, you know, they are in the first category of narcissists who are psychopathic and don't care at all. You will find some who are genuinely empathic but the way they come across is that they wish to benefit from this genocide so this woman this hijabi woman was walking through her house and she was talking about you know um this is what happened in Gaza today and she takes you through you know her hallway that's all designer and look at this and look at that now she's not telling people to look at the house but she's walking through the house so that everyone can see what she's done with it and how much she's spent on it. So she's killing two birds with one stone, which is talking about the genocide to please people, and at the same time, she gets to show off. So it's like, shall I tell you about the 70,000 children who died in Palestine? Let me do that from my newly renovated kitchen so you can see 
how lucky I am and how rich I am. And have I told you about all the people who were martyred this week? Oh, let me tell you that from my front room. I will open my curtains so you can see the wonderful view I have from my house. And of course, I have to end this wonderful tour of my house where I leave you pondering about how much wealth I have. I have to end it by taking a ridiculous selfie with this puppy dog husband who was willing to lose all his dignity and make a complete joke of himself to make me happy so I can get so many followers and so much wealth from all the endorsements I get now from companies who are happy that I support the Palestinian conflict and I also get the admiration of people who are impressed by me for speaking so much about the Palestinian conflict and raising awareness about the children who are dying in Gaza. And I will do all of that as I film my well-groomed children who are wearing the best designer clothes and sitting on our designer couch on their best behaviour and showing you all what a beautiful, wonderful home we have and what a perfect family we are. Now, because we aren't true believers, we don't believe in such a thing called evil eye. So I will continue to bombard your home pages every single day with images and videos of me on our luxury holidays and me in our new house and me in our new clothes and me in our new car and me with this husband of mine who is just used as a prop in my narcissistic campaigns and whom I think everyone wants, but only I find attractive. But what's the most important message that I'm trying to send you through all of this? It's free Palestine. And you better think that I'm a good person. You better think that I'm an empath because I have been speaking so much about Palestine. But I've been plastering my selfies all over social media for me to be gawped at by very strange men as a married woman. But hey, hey, no one's going to figure that part out, right? All they're going to see is what a wonderful person I am because I support the Palestinians and I talk about them all the time. This is what we're seeing. This is what I see when I go on social media. And unfortunately, when you click on one, you get 10 of them come up on your homepage. It's like a disease. You just can't get rid of them because of the ridiculous Instagram algorithm. But you get my point, right? You get my point. And Men do this as well, and men are notorious for doing it from the gym. You know, they just have to show you that gym bod. They've got to show you how much they work out in the gym. They've got to show you the car they drive. If they're going to talk about Palestine, they want to do it from the inside of their luxury BMW. It's just, it's all for show. It's all for show. These are all covert narcs. You'll never get an empath doing something so ridiculous like that. And then you get the Muslim influencers as well who have made it a trend to go to Taraweeh and they've made it a trend to go to protests. So they do this whole getting ready video now where they do an entire makeup tutorial and then they do this whole abaya thing where they show you how to style your abaya. Guys, you're going to Taraweeh. You're going to the masjid, right? Like I see so many women hang out after Taraweeh to catch the eyes of all these Akhi Abdullahs coming out, it's embarrassing. And this is completely against Islam. You know, like so many things have now become trends online when it comes to worship rituals. And I'm also seeing this new online conversion trend happening, but that's a subject for another day, inshallah. But yeah, these influences are creating trends out of worship rituals, and this is dangerous. And they're inserting the Palestinian cause to justify what they're doing. But in general, causes like this are a great opportunity for covert narcissists to show that they are good people. Okay, and again, this is why it's so confusing because a lot of people would have thought some influencers are highly narcissistic, but then, you know, they talk so much about Palestine and sometimes you see them crying in videos and you think, oh, you know, maybe I was wrong about that person. This person seems to be, you know, a real empath. And then the next day, they've got videos of them going to very lavish iftars and they're dressed inappropriately. And, you know, there's music and there's dancing in this place that they've gone to iftar in. And you think, okay, okay, it was just a show then. Because even going to these lavish iftars and suhoor gatherings have become a trend. So I've seen that this has gone viral on social media as well, where women are really getting dressed up to go to these events, 
that do suhoor and do iftar and there's no spirituality in them at all. There is nothing, nothing that is remotely religious about these events. So instead of just spending your time at home, reading Quran, you know, spending your time in dua, people are going to these parties and it's become more of a cultural trend than a religious trend to fast Ramadan. I'm seeing non-Muslims take it more seriously when they try it out than a lot of Muslims do these days. And the non-Muslims are actually doing it properly. And it's the Muslim influencers who are going to these lavish events because they're being paid to promote these restaurants and these cafes and, and these events and stuff, right? So they're getting loads of money for this. And it's confusing a lot of young Muslims as to what's right and what's wrong. And there are lots of Muslim celebrities who are doing this as well. They're promoting, you know, non-spiritual events in Ramadan in the name of Palestine. So, for example, if you go to this iftar event, you know, we've got nasheeds, we've got music, we've got entertainment, this and that. And we've got a fundraiser for Gaza at the end of it. You see how they insert Palestine into something that is wrong? And again, this is the mission of Iblis. It's the mission of all of their Qareens working together. Like, let's insert the Palestinian cause into something that's clearly not right. But it pulls on the heartstrings of people who want to do something nice for Palestine. So you get a lot of people who go. And a lot of people will justify themselves going by saying, well, it's a fundraiser for Palestine. But at the same time, it's not an Islamic environment to be in, especially during Ramadan. It's being used for business and people are using the followers of these influencers and celebrities for business and capital gain. Okay, so everyone who follows these influencers are used like farmyard animals. They're used like farmyard animals. You know, they are the ones who are churning a high income for all of these narcissistic people. So seriously reevaluate who you follow and who you support and who you buy from when it comes to these Muslim influencers online because it is the followers who enable this type of behavior and arrogance. And watch out for people who regularly post about Palestine on YouTube just for views so that they can get money from the views. You know, a lot of these people get thousands every month in payments from YouTube because of the high number of views, just because they're talking about Palestine, so they capitalize on it. So these are the people in the second category of narcissists, and I've spent some time explaining who they are because these are the most common narcissists, okay? So moving on to type number three, these are the people who pretend to care because they don't know how to, all right? So Unlike the first category of people who don't care at all and the second category of people who don't really care but they are good at showing that they care, this category of narcissists are people who don't care but they don't know why they don't care. Okay, It bothers them that they can't feel anything towards the people who are suffering in the genocide. So... They're not hypocritical, like type 2, but these are people who are suffering emotionally because even they don't understand why they can't feel anything. They see people around them suffering and crying and grieving and they just don't feel anything. But it's strange to them, okay? It's strange that they just cannot empathise or put themselves in the shoes of the Palestinians for them to even try and feel sadness and grief. And so you'll find that these people slip into a depression because they don't know what's wrong with them. And they do worry about their fate. They do worry about, you know, them going to hell and them being awful, evil people because they just can't relate. And it's not just with strangers whom they feel this with. They also feel it towards their own children, spouses and parents and siblings. So again, unlike type 2, who can show empathy for the outside world but not at home, this type of narcissist cannot show empathy in or out of the house 
okay? So they are the same with everybody. And they are low-level narcissists. They'll never be the malignant type, the psychopathic type. These are people who are low-level narcs, so they're not dangerous. These are people who have a conscience still, and they do have higher empathy than other narcissists. And more often than not, you'll find them to be the man-children and the women-children who are just, you know, children in adults' bodies. And it's these narcissists who tend to seek therapy and help for this emotional disconnect that they know they have. And they usually have a lot of family problems and marital problems because the codependents who live with them don't understand that these people have a disorder. And so they get really frustrated with the narcissist for not feeling anything and being so emotionally disconnected from the children, you know, from a baby in the house, from the wife, from the husband, they get really frustrated because they don't understand why this person is like this. And again, it goes back to their childhood. They were never taught how to express their emotions. They never understood how to empathize with other people and how to show compassion because they had narcissistic parents who did not give them that example of behavior. And so in their adulthood, they really struggle with this type of communication. And it always causes relationship problems. So it's something narcissists want to change, but they don't know how to. And even if they do go to protests or fundraisers, they feel empty. They don't feel anything when they go. And they don't enjoy those events either. They go and they participate, but they just feel it's pointless of them being there because they really cannot empathise with the situation. They're more likely to focus on the perception of the world being a very evil place than anything else. And again, that's a cause for their depression as well because the more evil they see, the less hope they have in anything changing for the better. And that includes themselves as people. So with some counselling and coaching... These people can actually be helped and they're easier to help than other narcissistic types. And finally, we go on to the fourth type of narcissist, who is actually narcissist type number three, but the one who actually manages to feel something for the Palestinians. And it comes as a result of them seeing something that really triggers something within them that ignites their empathy, that's buried very deep within them. So when they do eventually feel something, it is genuine, right? These are genuine feelings of sadness and grief that they have, but it takes an awful lot to get that empathy out of them, okay? They have to see something so brutal, so horrific to have their emotions awakened, so, for example, with an empath, just the thought of children crying and being hungry is enough to make them grieve, okay? Just the thought of it. They don't even need to see it. Just the thought and knowing that they're going through that is enough for an empath. But for a narcissist like this, it's not. It takes something alarming and really shocking to jumpstart the empathy that's lying dormant within them. And I've got a client, actually, who's a narcissist, and he said to me that there was one scene that he saw. I'm not going to repeat it here because it's seriously depressing. But he said it was that particular video that he watched that got him crying. And he said, I haven't cried in years. And he said, as much as I was so heartbroken to watch that video, I also felt relief within myself that I regained some sense of normalcy within myself as a human being because I actually cried. And he said, the relief I felt when I cried watching that video gave me peace. So again, these are the man children and the women children who, you know, there is goodness within them, but because of their upbringing, they've been taught to, you know, bury their empathy, grow a thick skin and never show that kind of weakness to the outside world where you'll just get eaten by wolves. So 
it felt very strange for him to cry when he saw the video because he said, I never, I don't cry of anything. But I knew that when I did cry while watching that video, I knew it was genuine. I knew that these were my real emotions coming out because this is rare for me. So it was interesting to hear him talk about that. So you will get narcissists who do genuinely feel compassion, empathy and love for the Palestinians who are suffering. But it takes a lot for them to awaken the empathy within them. It really takes something truly horrific for that empathy to come out. And sometimes that can take a while. But if it does come out, then that's a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. So it's still out of love that Allah allows them to feel that and come to the realization that they've got a problem. So not all narcissists are fake in their emotions, but you have to know which category they fit into of the four. And I hope I've laid it all out very clearly for you so that you can distinguish between them and understand how each one operates. And, you know, like I said, it's very important for people to, you know, gain an awareness of this because a lot of narcissists use the Palestinian conflict to reel people back into a toxic relationship. So, for example, if you've separated from a husband or wife and you later on see all the work they're putting into, you know, supporting the Palestinians, you're seeing them go to protests, you're seeing them, you know, go to fundraising events and pray at the mosque and all of those things, it might make you change your mind and take them back when they hoover you. But if they fit into category number two, you're in trouble because you're going to go through another round of narcissistic abuse because none of that was real. It was all a facade. It was all fake. Okay, they had an agenda behind all of this outward support for Palestine. And it's made you forget all of the abuse that they've put you through beforehand. Okay, so like I said, you know, people see them at these events and these protests and they think, wow, you know, amazing guy. They're taking selfies because they want it to be recorded. They want it to be acknowledged that I was here, right? Don't forget I was here and this is what I want people to know about me. That I'm a good person, so I have to document this and I have to put it on Facebook. I have to put it on TikTok and I have to put it on Instagram in case people on Facebook didn't see it on Instagram and the people on Instagram didn't see it on Facebook. So... You know, people who take so many pictures of themselves when they go to these protests and fundraising events and all these things, they do it to document something for future use. And it really misguides and manipulates a lot of codependent victims who seem to think that the narcissist has changed. So after separation, they see the narcissist doing all of these things and they think, wow, they've changed. They've become a better person. I'm going to give this person a second chance. And then before you know it, you're pregnant very quickly. Before you know it, you've got kids. Before you know it, you've been isolated. You know, he's convinced you to move to another country where you're isolated from your friends and family and your support network. And it just gets worse, okay? What people will show you in their behavior, believe that because that's their character. If someone has been abusive for a very long time and then you separate, And this can be any relationship. Okay, you can distance yourself from your parents, your siblings, your friends. And then you come back and you see that, you know, they've got better. It takes a while for people to change. I'm not saying people don't change. People definitely can change. But you need to allow a period of time for you to see that this change is consistent before you even consider allowing these people back into your life. But a lot of people get excited because they don't want to get divorced and they don't want to be separated from their family. So they'll see a couple of days of change and they'll be like, oh, great, alhamdulillah, they changed. I'm jumping straight back into, you know, this toxic relationship, not knowing that it's going to continue being toxic. But they jump into the deep end without truly assessing if this change the narcissist is displaying is actually genuine and if they can actually be consistent with it. 
So you have to allow time for people to change and prove themselves to actually be working on their disorder and on their shortcomings. And like I said before, someone who doesn't repent from their sins is someone who will always have a hard heart. And you will know if they have repented from their sins or not by, again, watching out for consistent behaviour. Do they still fall into the cycle of committing the same sins? Do they look like they feel bad for what they're doing? Or do they justify the sins they are committing? If there are those kinds of people, then, you know, that's what you're going to get. That is seriously what you're going to get. And you will only be getting back with them out of wishful thinking and hope that they will change one day or that you can help them change. Never do that. You'll never, ever, ever be the cause of a narcissist changing. Okay, a narcissist will never change for another human being. A narcissist will change when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them a calamity to humble them. Okay, the day they are humbled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the day they will change. But if they are never humbled by the hardships and the tests and the calamities that Allah sends them, no human being is going to do that for them. Okay, so don't think that the new supply or the back burner supply or the new person whom they've put on a pedestal is going to be the one to change them. Narcissists will never allow themselves to be changed by another human being. They might be inspired by somebody, but they will never change for someone. Because they always have to be above you. If anyone is going to change, it's going to be you. Because toxic relationships only enable the narcissist to get more toxic. But the toxic relationship will change you as a person. It will turn you into a narcissist. Okay, it won't turn the narcissist into an empath. But you're the one who's going to suffer. So because of the power dynamics they have in these relationships, they aren't the ones who are going to change for another human being in order to become better. So never expect it. So when you see them use the Palestinian conflict and the suffering of the Palestinians in general to cause more harm, inflict more suffering, inflict more pain, inflict more jealousy and abuse and all of these things, I advise you to really keep your distance. And I'm teaching you this so that you become aware of what they're doing in their manipulation so that you stop taking it personally. I've said this many times. Your downfall is when you take the narcissist manipulation personally. So when you know exactly what it is they're doing and how they're going about it, you can deal with them better. And you can put up healthy boundaries that will stop them continuing this cycle of abuse. And it will also stop you from being affected negatively and you can deal with your children and explain it to them in a better way. And this information will also help you to not resent the Palestinian conflict as a result of the abuse that's being inflicted on you because of it. So don't let the triangulation the narcissist is putting you through deplete your iman. Okay, don't allow it to ruin your character and to take away your empathy because that is the mission of their qareen. The most important thing that you need to hold on to is your iman. I've mentioned this in the previous podcast and I'll mention it again. This is the most important treasure you have that they want to take from you. So this information is here for you to understand that this is their mission and that you have to do everything in your power to not allow them to steal this from you. Okay, so when you understand how their minds work, you will be able to operate from a better place, a more powerful place, and you'll be able to deal with them more efficiently, whether that is knowing how to grey rock them, knowing how to avoid them, knowing how to distance yourself from them, and knowing when to give them space. So if they want to have a tantrum or be depressed or lock themselves in their room because they're depressed about Palestine, then let them do it, right? Give them that space. Don't give them the attention. Don't fight for their attention, don't compete for their attention. Just leave them to it. And you get on with your life. Because now you know what it is that they're doing. Get on with your life. Focus on your children. Focus on doing better things. And don't allow them to ruin Ramadan for you. And any other day of the year. I know it's difficult living with a narcissist. It's, it's a piece of hell on earth. 
but if you are choosing to stay with them or you have no choice but to stay with them, then this is what I advise you to do, okay? Just figure out a way of giving them space so that you can relax as well. You don't need to be dealing with this 24-7. If that's how they want to act and they can't communicate and they want to be immature, that's their problem and not yours. Okay, let them wallow in their own problem, but you take yourself out of it. And they're not going to like it. When you start standing up for yourself and you start to distance yourself and stop competing for their attention and you stop giving them so much fuel, it's going to irritate them and they might get worse for a little bit. But let it get worse. Let it get worse. It's only a short amount of time before they realise that it's not working on you anymore and they'll snap out of it. They might try something else, but this is something they'll snap out of. What doesn't work, they don't waste their time with. Okay, so that's the best thing you can do for your own sanity and for your own iman. Don't allow their demons to ruin you and destroy you and everything good that you have. So I hope that's helped, inshallah. I'll end it here. Um, I hope it's answered your questions. If you have any comments or extra questions, just drop them in the comments below. I do my best to get back to everyone. If you need one-to-one -one counselling and coaching, please reach out to me via my email below in the description box. Just send me a brief about your case and I'll get back to you. And please do like the podcast if you found it helpful. Please do share it with other people whom you feel could benefit from this content. And do subscribe to the channel if you would like to receive notifications about future podcasts that I drop about similar subjects. You can also sign up to my newsletter via the website and you'll get regular emails about the podcasts and other things. So thank you for listening if you're still with me until now. And until the next podcast, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.